Hello YouTube, I am Arn Peter, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about managing multiple rooms in your GameMaker projects. Now, since you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you've been working on GameMaker for a little bit, but you're starting to reach a point where you feel limited by working with a single room and you want to grow. And that's very exciting. The world is about to get a whole lot bigger for you. We're going to talk about the three most common room management functions in GameMaker. I'm going to go and walk you through what we're going to do. I have this RM inside. Oh, I have this RM outside. I'm going to show you how to make a player walk to the edge of the room and have trigger a room transition there into this RM inside. And then we can have a room restart when hitting this bad guy. And we can have go, uh, transition to the room win when hitting this gem. So th those are the all the use cases we're going to cover today. If you want a link to the project, uh, there is a link in the description that will also include the art assets and the art assets were, by the way, not made by me. And you can see the credits to the actual creators in the link as well. So just to give you a little tour of what's here, I already showed you the rooms. Um, that's using uh, some tile sets here and also um, some objects. But most of these objects are super bare bones. They're just an empty object with a sprite and we're going to be populating them uh, today. But the only one with any kind of logic in there is the player, and that's pretty simple, where I have actions for the left and right button to move and flip accordingly, to move and face accordingly. Uh, if you want to have more information about how to do that, I'm going to release a four directional movement tutorial, or it might already be out, I'm not sure. Okay, we are two minutes in, I need to get started on this. I'm going to start with outside, and I want the room to transition once the player walks off to the side of the room. So I'm going to grab this O trigger object and go ahead and put it there. So the idea is that once the player hits that object, it'll trigger a transition. So I'm going to go into this O trigger in order to code up that transition. Um, so we're going to go over to collision event with the player, and right here we're going to type out room go to next. So we need to clarify some things with room go to next. Um, for one thing, what does, where do we define the ordering? And that's um, a good question because it's no longer defined here in this rooms list. It's actually defined in a separate list which you can get to by clicking here or by scrolling up to the quick access and seeing room order up here. So I'm going to click here since that opens it up into a nice separate s section. So over here I can tell it that I want to start out in RM outside and then I want it to, to go to the next room and I want the next room to be RM inside. I want the next room in the ordering to be RM inside. Okay, so let's test that out. And there we go. We transitioned to the room just fine. Next I'm going to code up another collision with this enemy and show you the room restart function. So let's go into the enemy, hitting Control T to search for it. And then we're going to do a very similar thing here where we say collision with player. And then we're going to use the room restart function. So room restart will just restart us back at the beginning of the same room that we're in now. There is a somewhat similar function that you might have used before called game restart. This one restarts the entire game, like back at the first room. This one will just restart the same room. Okay. So let's test that out. And before I do that, I'm going to make the slightest tweak to arm outside. So this is a little bonus trick. Um, I actually want it to look like the player is walking through that door. And the way I've done that is I have um, this section of wall right here, which I can be set up to be above the player. So I'm going to, so that section of wall is in this tile door right layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that above the instances. And now, because it's above that layer, when the player moves into the door, it'll actually look like it's moving into the door. So it's going to look a whole lot nicer. Okay, I'm going into the door, and I'm through. All right, so we coded a restart with the enemy. Let's see if that works. That works. Awesome. Next, I'm going to go to the third room function. And what I want to do is when we hit this jewel, I want to go to a windscreen. So I'm going to go to oh, Jewel. 
So going to RM1 is going to be a little bit tricky because if I go back to the room order, you can see when we're inside, the next room is not RM1. So we need to use a different function for handling that. So if we go to the duel and add a collision event with the player, then I can go to, I can use the function room go to, and this actually takes a parameter for us to tell it which room we want to go to. So in this case, it would be uh, RM win. All right, now let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, outside, inside, then win. That's all for this tutorial. Hopefully it'll end up being like a pretty quick one. We're just covering the basic room functions. Um, if you like this tutorial, then you might want to know that this is part of a series of these castle themed tutorials where I'm going to go over a lot of um, mostly platforming concepts. So if you're interested in that series, you can see the final product here right now. Probably a good one for you to check out next is where I use a lever to open a door. So you can use a lever as an input to trigger other events. So that one's kind of cool. So I um, hope to see you there and uh, thank you so much for watching.